The first true tourists began to trickle in after the Civil War. These original visitors were adventurous hunters and sportsmen from New York City and New England who came to the Outer Banks for exceptional wildlife and bird hunting to be had. As an essential part of the migrating route for thousands of birds, visitors to the Outer Banks could seasonally hunt for snow geese, ducks, swans, and a number of different large aquatic birds. Fishermen discovered the area too, returning back home with huge puppy drums, sharks, or even marlin, and encouraging more adventurous tourists to make the trip to the Outer Banks. The locals, who were used to making a living on the fly, took notice and started enterprises as tour guides. Soon, small food stands and shops were quickly set up, as well as ramshackle hotels and motels. Sierra's most famous visitors were Mr. and Mrs. Edward Collins Knight Jr., wealthy New England industrials who fell in love with the northern outer, outer banks and eventually built a historic wellhead club. But there's more story on these famous visitors. The couple caused quite an uproar in the early 1920s when they arrived on North Carolina's outer banks to hunt ducks and geese in Currituck Sound. But that was nothing compared to the fury that erupted when the menfolk forbid Marie Knight from joining their hunting club because of her gender. She calmed herself and decided that living well would be their revenge. She persuaded her husband to buy a run-down hunting lodge. They tore it down and built the wellhead club the most luxurious and exclusive hunting lodge in the region. Currituck is an Indian name for land of the wild goose. Ducks, geese, and large aquatic birds of all kinds found a winter refuge in the sound behind the outer banks and in the late 1800s the hunters found them. The marshes became a hunter's paradise. Currituck Duck appeared on the menus of the finest restaurants in Baltimore and Philadelphia. During their high point from 1870 to the late 1920s, more than 100 hunting clubs lined the marshes along the Virginia and North Carolina coast. Wealthy hunters paid $100 a day for lodging, meals, and a guide. Some clubs reported incredible hunts, with one bragging of killing 414 ducks, geese, and swans in one day. It was into this that the Knights stepped in to make their grand statement. The mansion for the club cost $383,000 and took three years to build with all the materials shipped by a barge from Norfolk, Virginia, with its elevator, swimming pool, and basement, all first for the Outer Banks. The Wellhead Club became the talk of the region when it opened in 1925. The couple spent a living hunting season at the house, and the rest of the year they lived at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Edward Knight died in 1936 and his wife died several months later. With no children between them, Mrs. Knight left the club to a granddaughter who sold it in 1940 for $25,000 to Ray T. Adams, who used it as a hunting camp, changing the name to the Woodhead Club. During World War II, he leased it to the U.S. Coast Guard in 1958. It was sold and eventually leased until 1962 as the Boys Academy. Atlantic Research Corporation leased and later purchased it in the mid 1960s for solid rocket fuel testing. Many reported seeing the flares of the rockets. Though the project was purposely kept secret, former employees recall bringing their families for periodic 
vacation stays in the home. By 1992, after three more owners, the property had finally fallen into considerable disrepair. Betts McCurtha County stepped in to save it, buying it and forming the Wellhead Preservation Trust. Restored, it opened to the public in 2002 and is now listed on the National Register of Historic Places. McCurtha County has owned the Wellhead Club for a total of 24 years. The reason they bought it, the Whalehead Club, is to boost the numbers of visitors and revenue. The county contributes $800,000 annually for the Whalehead Club operations and capital costs. The Whalehead Club today is 94 years old and is in an open in 1922. Over the years, many visitors to the Whalehead Club insist that there's an energy in the house that makes them uncomfortable. Many stories exist about hauntings in this restored hunting lodge retreat, including one incident where a police deputy claimed someone grabbed his leg while he was on the second floor of the coastal mansion by himself. The most widespread indications of an evil presence in that home centers around the portrait of Mr. Knight in the dining room where many visitors claim they smelled cigar smoke odor. This is a bit eerie when you consider Mr. Knight's fondness for smoking cigars in that very room so many years ago. So if the wellhead is haunted, who is haunting it? That is the question many have pondered over the years. Is it the spirit of a little girl whose spirit still remains trapped in the home after all these years? There's a story of a child once running out of the house, screaming hysterically. The child claimed that a little girl was trying to grab him, but no one with the child saw anything. The story of the ghostly little girl was also reported by paranormal investigators who claimed to have seen this very girl in the basement of the home. The basement seemed to be the center of the more interest when you consider that at one point. The elevator leading to it had been shut down and bolted because it would regularly run to the basement without any living person at the controls. The supernatural presence at the Wellhead Club is so strong that the Coastal Paranormal Investigations Group visited the mansion in 2009. And while the paranormal investigators did conclude that that house indeed possessed spirits, it was the evil nature of the presence that worried them, so much so that they would not even spend the entire night there. Although there are no murders or crimes of a horrific nature that have been documented to occur at the Warehead Club, the mystery still remains. The only documented evidence that points to how and why these hauntings still occur happened back in 1933. The Knight family came to visit their retreat home in October, no different than any other year, really. However, three weeks later, they had left abruptly without an explanation, never to return. The history of the Outer Banks is a long and storied collection of milestones, storms, famous pirates, and vacation pa patrons and even a war-changing battle or two, from the first locals of 500 AD who made a happy home on these islands, to the thousands of vacationers who flocked to the beach year after year, the Outer Banks has always lured visitors and residents alike to explore, discover, and make history.